Right, I've got a great tip for those of you who are struggling with knee flexion. Now, sometimes people get knee flexion issues post-surgery or if they've got OA or they've had previous fractures in their kneecaps, things like that, where they lose range into flexion, okay? Maybe like on their good leg, you've got 130 degrees or something on your bag leg, you've got like 120 and it just doesn't go any further. And some people will discover this when they try and crouch down and they, they can go down on one leg but they, they really can't go on the other leg. They can't get the full flexion. So I've got some tips for you to try and help with that. Some of it will be due to the fact that the actual joint is tied and you've lost range in the soft tissues in the joint. Okay, the other part is also you've lost range in the actual quadricep muscle. Okay, so releasing off the quads and the joint, and it's the joint that's the hardest part, will help you on your journey to try and get more knee flexion. Now, some people have got permanent loss of range. Maybe they had some scar tissue, maybe they've got some OA, there's some fluid in there. So there's some people who won't get the full range, but a lot of those people haven't done enough of the mobility work to get them a little bit better, to get them less stiff. So, first thing I'm gonna show you is the stretch, and then we'll move to the mobility part of the joint. So the stretch you've probably done before. What I would do though, make sure, you know, people with knees like this, they don't really like kneeling on them. So if you're one of those people who doesn't like kneeling down, say, oh, I can't kneel on my knee, get a pillow out, okay? All you need to do is soften the ground. You need a wall, all right? You've got to get your knee on that. So say this is my affected knee. This angle here obviously needs to be less than what you've got. You can't go, if you haven't got any of that, you've got to sort of start forward. What you might need to do is just come forward so your foot is not on the wall as much. So there's less angle here. So start like that. Bring this leg forward into your lunge position. Okay, now if you can achieve that with flexion like that, if that's cool, you don't feel problems with that, then what you've got to try and do is come back up until you get the quad stretch. So with this stretch, for the muscle, don't push back into here because you haven't got the joint. Okay, so stay forward like that and go back with your upper body until you feel that kick in. Now what you've got to try and do at that point is keep, keep your knee out of pain as far as the tightness goes. So if you've lost range in your knee, right, don't go into the pain at the knee. Stay away from that so you can properly stretch the quad without the pain there. Here, what I want you to do, and this is hard when you've got really tight quads, but you've got to try and tilt your pelvis back. Now to do that, you've got to try and draw your core on and switch on your left buttock. So you've got to contract your left buttock. That's hip extension, all right? Now when you do hip extension, you're gonna get a bit of a pelvic tilt like that. If you're just doing just the buttock, that'll actually stretch you more. So you'll feel that through your rectus femoris and your quads more, maybe even a bit of hip flexor, because that could be part of it, because when you do glutes, okay, you're going to get a reciprocal inhibition of your hip flex in the front to actually get the movement. Now, if you can hold on that buttock, you'll get the stretch here in that position and you stay there, okay. Now, that's your quadricep, you know, meaning four quadriceps, maybe a little bit of hip flexor when you're in this position because you're doing a bit of a tilt, all right. You can even add in a bit of this if you want, all right. But that's to try and get the soft tissue of the quads better. So, when you bend your knee, there's not as much resistance here. So if you imagine like from flexion to extension, I've got to lengthen the quad to get the knee bend. And most people's quads are stiffer if they've got loss of range in the knee. If they had pain in the knee, effusion, post-surgical, they've lost that range there. Their quads, I mean, there's no way the mobility is going to be there because they don't, can't use it, right? They can't get the flexion. So doing that stretch will relieve some of the tightness, which will allow the mechanism to work a little bit better but you've still got to work on the mobility of the knee, the actual soft tissue tightness of the knee. Now in the clinic, we work on mobilization of the knee, get it stretched out, right? For homework, the clients go home with knee flexion. Now, one of the simplest ways of doing that is using the same position, okay? So I'm going to go back into my position that I was in before, right? Exactly the same. What I want you to do now, though, is take off that tight, that sort of stretch there. So I don't want to be upright with this because if I try and go upright and then try and go back, I can't because it's so tight here. So I need to flex the hip and switch off the hip flexor and the rectus femoris, okay? So take those two muscles out of the equation so I don't have as much tightness there. Then what I do is I try and sit back. So I lean forward and push my bum back to my knee. And you'll get to the point where you can't go any further. Obviously, I don't have any knee problems, I can go all the way back. And that's obviously 
a goal for some people. You may find a goal for you is just getting from sort of 120 to 130. Okay, that's your goal, not 145. So from there, you might start, you might even start from there. Oh, geez, I can only start there. But what you do is you lean forward and you push back with this leg and sit your bum backwards. And you go back to where it's tight in the knee and then you come forward again. Now, some people, that's all the range you can do. But think about trying to flex here and bum goes towards foot rather than a quadriceps stretch. It's almost like, not the opposite, but it's the same movement, you know, at the knee, but you're just taking about this component here. Some of you will start maybe about here, all right? You might even be quite close. It might be just the last little bit of range you want because it's a very old ACL recon or something and you're missing five degrees. So you want to get right up into here, okay, into this position. Obviously that's your quadriceps stretch and then you just lean forward and just drive it back. Okay, so you're trying to get the bum. Can I get my bum closer and closer and closer to my heel? And then come away. It's not a stretch you sustain, okay? The muscle stretch you sustain, this one, you rep it, okay? So back, pain on, pain off. Pain on, pain off. And it's a very easy way of closing that knee into flexion, right? Without heaps and heaps of tightness here. Okay, I would always do that stretch beforehand, so do your quad stretch beforehand to get rid of some of that, so when you're in here, there's not as much going on here, and then just push that knee back into that position. Now, as far as your foot, I don't mind. Obviously, when the toe's on, there's more heel to bum. When the toe's off, like this, it's further away. Okay, so some people like doing it like that, and they go back and go, oh, that's easier. Okay, so it's up to you whether you sort of stay with the toe like that, and then you slowly push back, or you keep it on there and come into this position, okay? It's some of it's personal preference. But those two combined are gonna help you with your rear homework of getting that knee more and more flexible. Because just, you know, a lot of people just trying to do this doesn't really tend to work. This, you can relax a little bit more, way more effective. Give that a shot, see you next time.